All right, guys, so in today's video, I'm going to share kind of a journey with you guys, kind of a rabbit hole that I went down when it comes to optimizing my streaming experience, because I have fairly fast internet, obviously, there's faster, but you can see I'm, I'm up streaming with around just over 30 megabyte or something. So I can theoretically stream in high quality, I can stream in 1080p, I can stream in 1440p. Also, I have an NVIDIA 980 Ti which obviously is not the latest card in the range. It's a bit outdated, but it does have the NVENC chip, which is a separate chip that kind of takes over all the calculations that's normally done by your GPU and CPU and puts it only on the NVENC chip. So you theoretically can stream without any performance issues. But because it has that NVENC chip, and even you only have a 980 Ti like I have, you can use NVIDIA Experience Shadow Play. And I've looked at that extensively in recent times, and I want to share my experience with you. Let me actually blow your mind, especially if you're a streamer, and you're always looking for new software, you know, maybe you tried XSplit, maybe you tried OBS and so on. This is going to blow your mind, really, because it, it blew mine so hard. So here we go. Let's look at some 1080p footage streamed in a carefully optimized OBS. And I'm going to put my OBS settings right on screen here so you can see them by yourself. I followed all the tutorials. I've played around a bit, tried some things. As you can see, I've set the upstream rate really high uh, to 18,000, which is basically because my internet allows for it. So let's look at the footage that I stream. And this is captured right off YouTube. Here's a little clip of the footage. 1080p using OBS, the settings you've seen, and set to NVENC, right, using the chip on the 980 Ti. Is this a Nokia? <laughs> no, it's an old iPhone. It's an old iPhone uh, that I found because as I told the story in the beginning, I'm kind of looking for a new webcam because the old one was literally like 320p or something ridiculous like that. Um, it looked more like a mosaic effect than a real camera. Uh, so what I did is I repurposed this old iPhone because all the cameras are crazy expensive. So you're getting stuttery footage. It doesn't look good. You get artifacts. Ignore the camera. I was playing around with the camera. I'm using a different one in the next clip. But another thing to mention, as I was streaming this, you know, I kept getting these encoder warnings in my OBS. Obviously, look, I can put it down to 720p, stream in that resolution, and then it's fine. Then OBS works perfectly fine and it's good. I don't get encoder warnings. You know, I put the, the graphical detail it has to stream down fine. But now let's look at Shadowplay streaming at 1440p at 60 frames per second. That before was also streamed at 60, by the way, but at 60 frames per second. Let's look at that clip. Uh, I really love it. Like I used to do it a lot when I was in the office, you know. People think you listen to, uh, uh, listen to, I don't know, music or whatever. But actually, what are you doing, son? But actually, you know, you're doing ASMR sessions. It's pretty relaxing. It's like a massage for the for the mind a little bit. For me, it, it doesn't work for everyone. I, actually, I did a project once that um, used ASMR, and I tried to explain it to my boss at the time. And, I mean, I've never seen the woman that puzzled, honestly. Like, she had no idea what I'm talking about. So it doesn't work for everybody. So it's much smoother. You get much crisper graphics. Overall, it just looks so much better. Right, so you look at these two things, like, I've, I mean, look, yes, I can optimize my OBS and I can probably stream at 1080p without the lag that you've seen. But what about the 1440p? I mean, it's significantly better. It's significantly crisper. And at first glance, Shadowplay kind of offers higher resolutions, higher frame rates, less performance impact, because that's the other thing. When I play with OBS, it really impacts my performance. I do lose like seven, eight frames per second. When I use Shadowplay... I don't lose anything. Like it just feels like I'm not even streaming. So there seem to be a lot of pros to Nvidia Shadowplay. But but hear me out. Hear me out before you just go and use Nvidia Shadowplay and say this is the best thing ever. Ho hold on. There are a lot of pros, okay? But there are also cons. Let's go through the pros first, one by one. The quality, right? It the results just blow you away. It's free. Uh, there's no lag or less performance issues than you have with comparable products. And I think that's in part because it's an NVIDIA product and they really optimize the software so it goes hand in hand. A little bit like a console, the software is really optimized for that specific hardware. And with that, you get nearly no performance issues at all. Uh, it's incredibly simple. Yeah, like you just bring up that, that little interface with Alt-Z or Alt-Y or whatever, and you can stream, you can record, you just put in a name. It is so convenient. I've always dreamed of this big red stream button where I don't have to set up stuff and I'm just like, oh, I'd love to stream. 
boom, hit the button and here we go and we're just live. You know, I don't want to do anything. I just want to hit the button, recognize what game I'm playing, give it a fun title, randomly generate it, boom, here we go, we're live. And Shadowplay attempts to be that. And in, in some areas they're succeeding. You can see I'm giving you all the cons. It's very convenient. Also, you get little viewer counts in the bottom of your screen. You can see your camera status, whether you're live or not on your camera in another corner. So there are all these little small conveniences that are beautiful and that I really applaud NVIDIA for, but at the same time, they are the cons, okay? And now, now it gets nasty, right? Now we're really hearing the dark sides, which is all your results recorded, whether it's streamed or recorded with NVIDIA Shadowplay are desynced. Kill the chicken. Oh, I can, oh my God, the poor chicken. Oh, another one, look at them. It takes some time in the beginning, the videos are synced, but then over the period of like an hour, your cam footage is desynced, your game sound is desynced. Some people recommend Handbrake to solve that, but I can't really accept it. I don't even know if it works with streams. I think Handbrake works with files that you record, but not necessarily with, uh, with streams. I haven't tried it out anyway. The next thing that's really horrible about Shadowplay is that it crashes, at least for me, after every, maybe after one hour, sometimes after two hours, crashes your stream. Everybody just gets like the spinning wheel of, of never ending loading time. And it's just a horrible experience for all your viewers. You have to shut down that client, restart the client. It always takes a minute or two. You go back up, you apologize, or you kind of, you know, chop down your stream in little one hour chunks because then you're kind of safe for one hour. It works safely. So that sucks, man. That's just bad. You know, I mean, horrible. You always expect after one hour of streaming, you expect it to crash anytime. That's just horrible. The next thing is that Shadowplay is very picky about cameras, which cameras it recognizes, which it doesn't like. I've specifically bought like one webcam. It worked perfectly fine with OBS, but it did not work with Shadowplay. Shadowplay decided it doesn't like it. Several DSLR cameras that you then can emulate with the software that then work in Skype and Zoom and so on, they don't work in Shadowplay. Often they work in OBS because OBS feeds its stuff from the you know, device manager from Windows. It's like if there's a device listed, it just feeds from there. Shadowplay doesn't do that. It's very weird in the way it recognizes cameras. So I had Again, a few cameras that work with OBS didn't work with Shadowplay at all, so very disappointing. Monetization doesn't really work for me. You can click a monetization button in the Shadowplay interface, but it just doesn't work. Even after the videos, like your live streams are saved on YouTube, they're listed as demonetized. Not in the sense that content has been found and it's been flagged and demonetized. No, it's just that the slider has been set to do not monetize videos. So that's the videos that come out of NVIDIA. Even I've activated monetization. So that's really, really weird. It's another thing. The next thing is you can't use the YouTube studio to edit your thumbnail or your title or anything. You literally can only use the interface. You can then later amend it. There is a little tab within the YouTube video manager where you can edit it later after on, but it's really clumsy and it doesn't work. But I guess that is kind of a price you pay for the convenience. The convenience is you just hit Alt Y, smash the broadcast button and you're live. So I guess it's kind of a trade-off, right? You, you get all that convenience, you just type in a quick title, go live, it works really smooth and well, but you don't have that control that YouTube Studio offers you, unless you know after being live, you go there, you set it up during the stream. Another downside is you see yourself all the time while you're streaming. If you're using a webcam, you will see yourself. And there's apparently no option to switch it off. I couldn't find one at least. There's no option to set up my exact camera size. I have to follow like three preset sizes. There's no option to put the camera to full screen. There's no real option to set up a quick description when I go live, like just another box where I can put a description. It kind of automatically takes your specs and puts them there. There's no option for thumbnails. There's no option for what screen or application I wanna use. Like you don't have any control and it really sucks, especially when you compare it directly to OBS where you have all these lovely scenes and you just hit the scenes. You know, it's brilliant. Uh, don't have any of that. You just hit stream, camera, game. That's all you can do. So very limited control. It only works with Nvidia cards. If you don't have an Nvidia card, you're screwed. Okay, so don't even consider Shadowplay which kind of sucks. I mean, I understand why they do it. It's, it's like a software that's really optimized for their chips and all that. But at the same time, it's I always hate when anything is exclusive. You know, I hate exclusive things. The next point, and you can see this list is getting longer and longer. You can't stream to Restream IO, right? I used to stream with OBS to Restream IO, so it goes to Twitch and it goes to YouTube at the same time. Great. Can't do that. Can only stream to YouTube or to Twitch. 
can choose, but there's no restream, that option. As far as I'm, I'm aware, I mean, I, I didn't get it to work. This whole thing is clearly early in development, but I can totally see the potential in this software. And I'm gonna be honest with you, despite all the list of downsides, I use it now to stream. Even I pretty much can't use the results as a saved video afterwards because it's all desynced. During the stream, it works fine. So you do high res streams with great resolutions and great frames with no performance issues, but the results are useless. I mean, OBS has its pros as well. Like I said, the control, it's very compatible. It accepts everything, it's free, but it's also very demanding in regards to hardware, I find personally, at least more than Shadowplay. And even I set up the NVENC in OBS, it still clearly impacts the FPS. And in some instances, it even led to crashes. I had crashes because I was streaming on OBS. Uh, also, there's no quick online button. There are so many things like downsides to OBS. So it's a really difficult thing. But I just wanted to share this journey with you guys because I, like I said, stream now with Shadowplay. And I love it, but I also hate it. It's like a love-hate relationship. But I can't be bothered with OBS anymore. I can't really be bothered to stream in 720p if this other software delivers 1440p, which would be unthinkable, to be honest, in OBS. I don't know, guys. What are your thoughts? Uh, share that down in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear your experience. There seem to be a lot of videos out there of people talking about Shadowplay as a platform to record your gameplay. So I felt this might be a unique kind of view into the streaming side of Shadowplay. And maybe someone at NVIDIA is watching this. Please, guys, you heard the list, man. Please fix it. In God's name, you've got like gold on your hands. This software runs so well, it doesn't impact performance. It is the best streaming software ever that I've ever used if there wouldn't be those downsides. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you watched it to the end. If you did, smash the like button. It looks like this and it's kind of down there somewhere. I don't know where it is, but smash it. Smash the subscribe button. Do the things. Hope you had a good time. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you next time. I'm out. Bye.